Welcome to Church of the Chair, where we don't skinny dip, we chunky dunk. I'm your host, E, and today, we're going down by the river. Today, we're going to be reviewing On the Savage Side by Tiffany McDaniel. This was one of my most anticipated reads this year, and it did not disappoint. I'd previously read The Summer That Melted Everything and Betty by the same author. Tiffany McDaniel can write her ass off. What the... What's going on with my shirt? Anyways, on with the review. Before we get started, I have an experiment uh, that I want to try. This next part, there will be no cuts because I, I don't want it to seem like I'm cheating. But anyone who knows me knows my memory is absolutely terrible. It's one of the reasons why I'm doing these videos like I'm doing them now with all of the cuts. Because I can only remember so much at a time and the older I get, the worse it gets. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to list off all the characters that I can remember from this book. Starting off with Addie or Adeline. Uh, that is the the main characters. That's their mother. You have Aunt Clover, uh, and then you have the main characters themselves, which are Ark and uh, Daffy Dogs. G D O G G S. Uh, then you have their friends: Sage Nell, Thursday, Indigo, Violet. Um, then you have the men. Um, now, in this book, no, there is there are no good characters there are no heroes um but the men are especially vile and don't give me that not all men shit Arr! don't give me that um you have the spider which goes by no other name uh when you read the book you'll understand why you have the highwayman you have the river man who is the that's the nickname the river man is the nickname for the uh, serial killer that's running around we'll get to more of that in in a minute uh then you have welt and then you have John Teresa. You have the girl's grandmother, which is Mama Milkweed. That then then one of the one of the girlfriends of the main characters. She has a child named Grassy. These characters live rent free in my head. Every single one of them have their own uh, trials and tribulations, their own wants, their own needs, their own failures, their own successes. It is amazing how much depth of character for that amount of a cast because every single one of those characters are perfectly perfectly drawn out and i commend the author for managing to pull that off next up i want to talk about some trigger warnings uh especially for myself i had a very difficult time reading this book it took me three four months to to finally finish it i'm not sure exactly how long i actually read it for when i started it but when I, when I started, I had to keep putting it down because if you don't know, I have a history of drug addiction. I was on heroin from 97 to 2001, and this book is all about these characters struggling with heroin addiction. It was very well done, very accurate, um, but I had to keep putting it down because every time it was brought up, it was so well done that I got the itch, the taste, I needed a fix. So I had to step away from the book. The next trigger I'll mention is there is graphic sexual violence of this book. And especially there is a scene with a 9 or 10 year old girl being violently assaulted. And I need you guys to be aware, aware of that in case you have those triggers. Now while all of this is horrible, the way Tiffany McDaniel writes is first very readable. It uh, It's very easy to get sucked into her world also her language is always beautiful her prose is elegant and pristine and i loved reading the book even if i didn't like the experiences that i watched unfold within the story this next piece is a criticism but only based on my own bias here it's going to sound funny to a lot of you but this book for me is too plot heavy. The Summer That Melted Everything and Betty, uh, McDaniel's previous two books, didn't have much of a plot whatsoever. It was more a stringing together of slice of life stories involving the characters in those books. In this one, while the serial killer plot is a subplot and the characters are forward, while the plot is behind them, I still felt like it was too much, and I know that's an odd complaint, but I would rather have just had this story without the constant wanting to find out who the killer was, 
and knowing that hopefully Tiffany McDaniel did not fictionalize a killer's identity. If you don't know, this book is based on the Chalacate Queens or the Chalacate Six, a group of six women who were brutally murdered and left in the river in Chalacate, Ohio. All too often when true crime stories are fictionalized, especially to the extent that this one was fictionalized, you find the author going for broke and making their own assumption of who the serial killer who the killer was and their identity this might be a spoiler to some but the identity of the killer is as in real life never never discovered and i appreciate that i do not think that it is right to fictionalize a tragedy and then change the narrative or the ending as it were even though this cold case is still ongoing. The last thing I want to point out here is my favorite part of the book. It's a very small piece, but that's usually what I latch on to when I read books like this. Cleopatra's Time Machine is an old broken down car that the girls find by the river, which is their hangout spot, where they go to shoot heroin or you put on their crowns, as they call it. Um, and toward the end, there's a scene with Daffy talking about the about the car, about Cleopatra's uh, time machine and how it runs on water. It is one of the most beautiful passages I have ever read in my life. And I commend the author for accomplishing what she did with that scene. It felt like everything came full circle. And the wordplay of Ark, one of the characters' name is Arcade Dogs, but her sister Daffy calls her Ark. And changing that one letter at the end, it, when you read it, you'll understand what I'm talking about. It, I was in tears for a while just, just thinking about that. So yeah, I, I applaud you, uh, Tiffany McDaniel. That was fantastically done. Now this next bit is not a criticism. It is just me admitting something. I have a touch of the tism. Uh, if you know what that means, you know what that means. I saw the twist. There's only really one twist in this book. I saw the twist coming very early on. Uh, probably about the time that the first body pops up. And I was like, yep, that's... Uh, and it has nothing to do with who the killer is. Like I said, that's left to your own imagination. The cold case is left cold. But I, I, I saw the twist coming. I don't know how or why because it's done so well in the book that it should have, you know, flown under the radar. But with me, I have a problem with anything that's uh, uh, like thrillers or suspense novels. I can usually tell what's coming based on how well the author builds it up in the beginning and I thought it was I thought it was pretty obvious especially when Addie starts talking about uh, a certain character being sick but that's all the time I have for you today if you have read On the Savage Side by Tiffany McDaniel or you've read her other two books uh, The Summer That Men Melted Everything and Betty if you have not read Betty what are you doing with your life if you have read any of those books and would like to tell me what you think please do down there in the comments but until next time oh, I love him, but I hate it at the same time I'll hail the chair